what's up you guys welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing i hope you guys are doing great so today we are going to do a story time video i have never done a story time video on my channel so this is new for me i have a lot of stories to tell but i'm just going to start with the i guess the basic story time and if you're new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe down below comment share your your stories with me your experience with me i love reading them so anyway <clears throat> so this story time is about how i got scammed out of 700 dollars yes i said it and this was the hardest scam of my life and so i would take you guys back so i was in well back in high school so i grew up in new york city back in high school it was like during prom season and this is like the worst thing that could ever happen to anybody i hope it doesn't happen to you um so it was during prom season in new york city i went to high school on in on the upper west side it was like 57th street and like around columbus circle if you guys are from new york you know where that is like next to the park central park so anyway, so I went to school in New York City. Um, and so during prom season, of course, everyone gets ready for prom. And you can you turn it off? So of course, everyone gets ready for prom. You get your groups of friends. Everyone comes together. You put money, you get a limo. Then of course, you go ahead and you buy your dress. You know, you get ready. So I remember, Aiden, don't do that. Put it down. So I remember my friends and i um aiden so i remember my friends and i we started collecting money to get a limo so we went online i don't even know back then everyone used craigslist that's when craigslist was like really popular for anything you can rent anything you can buy stuff so we went on craigslist we're looking for um people who are renting out limos for prom and then we saw this car it was a Rolls Royce, right? <laughs> That's when Rolls Royce was like popular. It was a Rolls Royce. So everyone, we were like, oh my gosh, we have to use a Rolls Royce to prom. Like how quick would that be? And mind you, I graduated 2006. And so this was around 2006 actually. Yeah, so before graduation, our prom was before graduation. So anyway, so we went online, we found this guy who has a nice Rolls Royce. It was white, it was something that we wanted. So we we called him and we were like oh we'd like to see the car and you know we talked about the pricing and he said in order for him to pretty much pick us up that we need to put down a deposit so we we're like okay but we still have to see the car to make sure it's the car that we wanted so of course everyone trusted me because i was kind of like the one who looked like I was smart. <laughs> so everyone was like, okay, when you find you can handle the money, you can meet up with the guy. Cause the guy was like, he didn't have time for us to come to his place because it was a private car. We should have known something was wrong. So it was a private car, it was in a company. And so he said he would rather meet up with one of us and show us the car and get the deposit and stuff. So I figure, okay he can come to my place at this time i lived with my uncle in queens right so i was like okay my uncle is a man my uncle can see the car as well and we can decide if we're gonna go with the car so long story short this guy comes he didn't come during the day he came late at night and he came he was smoking and if you're wondering he was kind of like italian or russian he because he had a, an accent you can tell he's not like an american and so he was smoking. He looked like he was nervous. I just thought he was tired. And plus I was young, so I was naive. So I was just really like excited. So first thing first, first alarm that, okay, go in my room, baby, and watch. Mommy's doing a video. So first thing first, that should have set an alarm. He looked nervous, right? But I didn't think it was anything um, too big, right? So he just like, he pulled out a cigarette. He was smoking, it was later in the night. Second thing, he did not come with a Rolls Royce that he showed in the picture. Instead, he came with a big white van, um, a big white SUV. And I was like, uh, where's the car? 
and he was like oh i'm sorry i thought you were the one who wanted this suv and i was like no we wanted a rolls royce because that's what we saw on craigslist and he's like oh i'm so sorry i guess i made a mistake i've been doing like you know showing cars so i thought you wanted this car long story short he said oh don't worry about it we have the rolls royce and mind you beforehand he had asked me to write the different stops that he's going to make to pick up other people and then who the last person was going to be before we headed to the prom venue. So I had all of that ready and I had my deposit ready. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, that this, you know, I'm, I guarantee you, you're going to get your Rolls Royce, you know, we're gonna put it in the paper. Long story short, we go back inside the house and I gave him the money, $700, he, he writes, something on a receipt like the receipt looks legit right so there was two sides so he writes stuff he signed i signed he took a copy he gave me a copy of the receipt and then he took my 700 dollars, right and so i called i called my friends and i was like yeah guys we have the rolls royce they were like did you see the car he's like no he didn't bring it because you know it was a misunderstanding but we're definitely gonna get the rolls royce so literally three days before our prom my friend was like okay let me give him a call because someone had backed out from the the whole deal so i wanted to call him and let him know that hey you don't have to go to this person's house to pick them up so i'm calling the number on the receipt right and it's not going through okay so I'm like, okay, so we go back on Craigslist to try to find his ad on Craigslist. And little do you know, the ad has been taken down. So there was no way of contacting this guy. So we ended up going, so on the receipt, there was an address. It says it was like a, cause he told us that he had like a, a, a yard where he puts his cars. So we went to that address. It was on the west side, right across from Central Park. I remember that place vividly. And my friend and I went after school. It was a hotel. And we were like, okay, this does not look like a place where they have cars. So we go into the hotel, we show them the address. We're like, is this the right address? They're like, yeah, this is the hotel. It was some hotel, some expensive hotel. I don't even know, I don't even remember the name of the hotel. Mind you, this was 2016, right? Is it 2016? No, 2006. That's 2016. So it was an expensive hotel. The doorman was like, ah, this is the right address, but that's the wrong phone number. Nobody, no one sells cars or rents cars in this area because it was like a high class um, area. And we were like, what? Like, there's no way. This is like three days to prom that we figured this out. We, I was so upset. $700 and we were young. We didn't really have money to be like splurging like that. We just wanted a Rolls Royce and we were supposed to be given, excuse me, we we're supposed to be giving the guy the balance for the car the day he picks us up for prom. And so now we're asked $700 and no car. It was just like, I could not believe I just got scammed. <laughs> it was the worst feeling ever and all my friends are like it was your fault Winifred you have to pay for it you and your uncle have to pay the the seven hundred dollars like everyone basically blamed me and my uncle that we didn't see this like so long story short my friend she was really nice and we started calling people trying to like beg people to help us out for prom long story short we found a different car that someone you know they heard our story and they decided to help us so they gave us a really nice white car i think it was still a rose royce that we ended up getting for the prom it was nice but then after that i was so upset like how can this guy take advantage of me so i talked to so many people they were like you have to go report him in prison he's probably out there scamming other people so what did i do i went to the precinct in queens because the, the incident happened in queens right and then i reported it and because I was so young, they would just like look at you like, eh, you have no case. And they were just like, do you have an address? I gave them a piece of paper and I explained to them that this is not the right address. So basically they were right. I had no case on this guy. I don't know his name. 
I don't know his address. I don't know anything. Even the ad that he had on um, on Craigslist that had his email was taken down. So we had no way of contacting him. And I know you're probably thinking, what about the phone that the the number that you called the, in the first place? That number was disconnected. So there was no way of tracing this guy. Like this guy was a legit scammer. He was 100% legit. And I am so pissed that I fell for his strap. And I couldn't sue him. I couldn't get my money back. I pretty much just looked like Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> so I lost $700 right before prom. And it was so bad because I had, my uncle had to pay the extra pinky uncle. <laughs> he had to pay the rest of the money that was was lost basically. And he was upset with me. <laughs> so that's how I got scammed. I know I got scammed. This is a story time of when I got scammed and I would never forget it. And since then, I've been super careful extremely careful if i'm buying stuff i have to make sure you're legit i have to make sure your name matches the name on your driver's license i don't play games <laughs> anymore <laughs> because from new york you learn quick when you if you grew up in new york you learn very quickly so i don't play games i don't take chances if i go anywhere even when i go to target i buy stuff i always make sure i have my receipt when i return stuff I always keep the receipt until I check my account and make sure that the money is in my account before I throw those receipts away. Like I'm crazy like that because I've been scammed once and fool me once, shame on shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So yeah, there you go. So no one is ever gonna scam me ever again. Well, except it did happen again this Christmas, trying to buy Christmas pajamas off of Facebook. And they took my money and they sent me pajamas that looked like I just came out of prison. <laughs> and they didn't want to give me my full money back. And I was like, whoa, like, wait, what? We're in America. I called my bank right away and the issue was resolved. But anyway, that's a story of how I got scammed. If you want to hear more story time, just give this video a thumbs up. Tell me down below that you did enjoy this video and share your stories with me of how you got scammed. It's snowing again. Like spring is never coming. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye.